Hi! So today I'm going to talk about different revenue streams for artists. Um, I usually talk to pin makers, designers, artists who want to make physical goods, and we're going to talk about that. But there are so many other ways that people like us can make money, and I really want to kind of dispel this notion of a starving artist. There are so many ways that we can make money, and ways that we can make money from different revenue streams at the same time to create a healthy and sustainable business for ourselves out of our own art. But first, be sure to like and subscribe because I talk about enamel pins and running a creative business and it's really great. Okay, let's get into it. All right, first revenue stream is the very obvious one. Uh, open your own shop, selling your own goods. That's what I do. I make enamel pins, accessories, apparel, all that kind of good stuff. So open a shop, run your shop. The thing with having that is that you are in charge of everything. Marketing, fulfillment, you are a one person show, which is fine works well for many, many, many people, but know that opening your own shop is kind of the very first avenue that I think um, artists should have. <laughs> Number two, you can add subscriptions to your shop. So I have a pin club and I actually have two pin clubs and I did a video about this a while ago so you can check that out. That is a really great way to have some recurring income in your business so you know I have X amount of subscriptions I know I'm gonna get X amount of money it's a good way to kind of level out the ebbs and flows of the creative life so adding subscriptions is another way to uh, kind of have another income stream next up is wholesale and consignment I talked about wholesale recently as well but this is selling to individual shops and brick and mortar stores. So they will buy stuff for you at a wholesale price and then you ship it to them and then your stuff, ooh, punching a window. Um, and then they'll sell it in your shops and that's a really great income stream to have, especially if you have your own shop, you have inventory sitting around, instead of having it just sitting, why not send as much as you can to wholesale stores and have that income stream as well. So once you have regular relationships with shops, they'll be coming back to you and then you'll have your retail orders coming in and your wholesale orders coming in. The same goes for consignment. Consignment is basically when you give people the product and then they pay you when it sells. So be very careful with that. Make sure you are giving your product to reputable places. Uh, I have consignment in um, a local shop here in Austin and that works out really well because they are fantastic. So they just pay me when it sells. But make sure you have a relationship and you know that someone is trustworthy before entering into a consignment agreement. But it's basically the same kind of thing. It's another shop um, selling your goods for you. All right, next up is number four. We've got print on demand. So this is your stuff like Society6, Redbubble, Threadless, even like Spoonflower, places like that. That's where you upload your design and people can go to your shop and buy from there. Thing is, they handle all of the manufacturing, they handle all of the shipping. You don't have to touch any of it, which means that your percentage that you get is pretty small. So there are a lot of people who have thriving shops like this because they can just crank out designs or they have a huge social media following. Places like that can work really well. Um, but just know that the percentage that you're getting is going to be really low. And then you'll be sending people to another site. It's like a marketplace. So you can be like, hey, buy my stuff. And then they might recommend someone else's thing and then they buy that. So that's just something to think about. Uh, but print on demand is uh, a viable thing to do as well. Now in that same kind of vein, you can do drop shipping with places like Printful. Um, Printful integrates with um, a few different platforms and there are lots of others. Okay, do your research. Printful is the only one that comes to mind. They basically, you can sell the thing in your shop and then they print it and ship it for you. So if someone buys like some pins from me and a t-shirt that Printful prints, then I will ship the pins and then Printful will ship the shirt separately. Uh, there are lots of different products that you can have uh, with this, mugs, shirts, all kinds of things. It's a good way to have a lot of inventory without having to house and warehouse a lot of inventory. Number six is art licensing. So this is when a company basically pays you to put a piece of art that you've created on something else. Now this is a pretty complex machine and uh, a lot of people have art 
licensing agents and it's a it's a whole new world but if you get it cranking it can be a very sustainable uh, revenue stream basically because you can you can create the artwork and then you set your parameters and then they can do whatever they need to with it and then you get paid there are a couple of women who do an amazing course that I bought and I haven't gone through yet <laughs> about um, art licensing in particular and I think it's a really great avenue for a lot of people who might not want to have inventory that they ship they might not want to uh, just run a shop like that and they might just want to draw stuff and get paid to draw stuff so <laughs> all right and kind of along the same lines for that is freelancing obviously um, this one's kind of a no-brainer. Whatever kind of freelance design or artwork that you want to do, there is definitely an avenue for that. I tried that a long time ago because I have a BFA in design. I've done graphic design for years and years and years. And I was like, let me do freelance after I left my corporate job. And it was not for me. So be sure that you don't mind having lots of bosses instead of just one. <laughs> But freelancing is absolutely an option uh, for folks like us. Now, another fun way to earn some money is to do in-person workshops or virtual workshops. So this is basically teaching what you do. I've done in-person workshops at Craftcation before. It was absolutely fantastic. I loved it. I taught about Instagram. I taught about enamel pins. There are so many things that you can talk about that you have an expertise in and doing an in-person workshop um, where it is safe <laughs> right now or even a virtual workshop to teach people um, how to do what you do is a fantastic way to earn some extra income. Make sure that, you know, I like to systematize everything. So try it out a couple of times, see what you like, see what you don't like, and then see if you want to add that into your kind of regular uh, income streams. <laughs> Okay, another income stream is speaking gigs, if that's something that you're into. I know there are a lot of artists who will go up and do basically like TED Talks, stuff at Adobe Max, um, any kind of speaking gig at a creative conference, stuff like that. Uh, people can make a lot of money at speaking gigs, but uh, it does sound horrible to me. <laughs> I'm just giving you the options. I'm not telling you what to do, <laughs> and I'm not telling you that I do all of these things not the case. I'm just saying that speaking gigs can be pretty fun. I know I love watching Adam JK talk and Lauren Holm talk. Speaking gigs are a possibility and you can get paid for them. Now in terms of teaching, you can also, uh, the next income stream is writing a book. You can write a book. Why not? You can illustrate something, make a coloring book. You can um, write about your process or your story. Uh, this again, is a huge undertaking. <laughs> there can be agents involved, self-publication, but there are a lot of people like Amy Tangerine has a book that she self-published and then was picked up uh, called Craft a Life You Love and she is um, a blogger and an artist and she was able to move that into books. Same with Joy Cho, she's a designer and has a whole team behind her and She's got multiple books uh, that she has written and or illustrated and um, books are definitely an avenue and a revenue stream for artists. Now, if you don't want to get into books per se, but you still want to kind of go into the teaching, this is the last thing I will talk about and that is creating an online course. So I created an online course called Enamel Pins 101 where you can learn how to make enamel pins from me. I go through the whole process. I break down everything from beginners to seasoned vets. We talk about making enamel pins and manufacturing pins and launching and running a sustainable business. I go into all of it. And if you have a skill that, if you have questions that people are asking you over and over and over and over again, Think about what are they asking me and how can I package this into something where I can get paid for my labor. So instead of sitting there for hours on end answering the same questions over and over and over again, spending your time doing that, you can package it up and sell it and um, use that knowledge to create another income stream for yourself.
So I think that was actually 11. <laughs> they run the gamut from uh, easy to ridiculously difficult. <laughs> and I want you to think about um, kind of taking one step at a time. I am a fan of simplifying, making things as easy as possible for yourself and for your customers. So my recommendation when you see a big list of income streams like that, don't get overwhelmed. Don't feel like you have to jump into all of them immediately. I would suggest taking one thing, learning it, doing it well, systematizing it, making it easy for you to run. And then when that is smooth sailing, then add the next one. So a lot of people will start off with opening up a shop. They'll get a handle on that. They'll get a handle on ordering, creation, marketing, all of that, and then add wholesale into it. And then you can systematize your wholesale. You can systematize your outreach and your shipping practices and uh, fulfillment, just all of that. And then maybe adding in some art licensing. Maybe you want to try and create a specific portfolio for that and then grab that income stream. Or maybe you want to, once you have a handle on your shop and your wholesale, maybe you wanna add a workshop in there too or something like that. So I want you to experiment with the different income streams. I want you to see what works best for you, see what your audience and your customers are really into and then if it feels like too much, you can always cut one of them out, you know, and then focus specifically on another one. I'm not saying you need to do 800 different income streams. I think having two or three can build you a very solid business foundation. And then maybe once those are going well, you're getting a lot of money, maybe you can add to the team and then add in some more if you'd like. But um, let me know what you think. <laughs> Um, I think there are lots of ways for us to earn money as artists and I think the the world is abundant and it's possible for us to um, have thriving artistic careers and um, yeah I think you can do it I think there are a lot of ways for us to make money and I think that's great <laughs> there's the quote of the day <laughs> Um, okay, so let me know which income streams you are most interested in. Let me know which ones sound terrible to you that you will never ever do in the history of the world. Um, <laughs> and let's talk in the comments. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.